Thank you very much. Welcome to all of you. I'm going to put my glasses on, showing my age. I'm so delighted to be here attending my first uh, National Council um, International Visitors National Meeting and to meet with all of you who make this network so successful. It's hard to believe, so we started with 675 registered participants, but you guys are the troopers. <laughs> yes, you, you are an incredible testament to the program and your interest in public diplomacy. Thank you, Sherry, for that kind introduction. Her speeches always really touch at the heart of what we do and why it's so successful in your dedication to citizen diplomacy. So thank you for your commitment to our shared mission. I want to thank all of you who played a role, again, just echo, uh, who played a role in making this national meeting even possible. Thank, special thanks to you, Peggy, for serving as the chair to the planning committee and to all the members of the planning committee also, special thanks. And, and the staff of NCIB, you guys are so important. So blizzard or not, this event is going to be successful because of your hard work. I also want to extend a warm thank you to our two special IVLP alumni who are joining us this morning. We have Albert Stankowski, the website coordinator for the virtual chattel pro uh, project at the Museum of History of the Polish Jew. Uh, in Warsaw, Poland. I met um, Albert a, a couple of months ago while I was there. It's good to see you. This is the first time I've seen you. Thank, thank you for standing there. And I'm thrilled that you, um, that you were willing to come back to speak to us, uh, to share with us the impact of the program. We also have Guy Michel Suko from Mali who joins us. Guy, where are you in the room? Are you here? I saw him earlier. Okay, so he is the uh, assistant auditor to the Bureau of uh, General Verification in Mali. I guess that would be comparable to the uh, General Accountability Office here in the States. So he was an IV in 2008, and he's here to speak to us as well. So we look forward to hearing from the both of you. Um, and thanks again for, for making the trek, even in this really bad weather. So I met some of the CIV's uh, representatives uh, first in Cleveland last summer and over the past few months I've had an opportunity to meet with all of the MPAs um, and I'm looking now forward to, look to meeting some of you in the audience. If you haven't had a chance to come and introduce yourself, please do so. I want to get to know you all. I'm so impressed with your dedication and your passion and your enthusiasm for this program. Um, this network is truly amazing. It really is quite amazing and it's energizing. I'm really excited about the programs that we did in 2009 and the programs that we are doing in 2010. So just as background, in, 20, uh, in 2009 we completed 761 projects worldwide. These projects included 4,400 participants who visited your communities and made connections that they carried home with them. Uh, some of you already heard, as uh, Sherry mentioned quickly, that we received a welcome budget increase for fiscal year 2010. And many of you, I think, have already seen some direct impact as a result of that increase in larger participation grants to come here and uh, in higher community partnership grants that you'll see. Uh, what that translates into, however, is that we're going to be expecting significant increases in visitors for the next and the final six months of the year. So April to the end of September is going to be a busy month for the CIV networks, and I hope, hope everybody is ready for that, okay? <coughs> We're encouraging the national program agencies to gear up for these increases, and some of them, I think, are going to be hiring on additional staff to take care of that. I'm asking the um, MPA staff and my own staff to reach out to the network to its fullest capacity. I really want to see Washington programmers reach out to, community, to communities that they don't typically utilize. So we want to see more um, satellite programming and I really want to ensure that the 92 CIV communities in the network see benefits from the increased budget and the visitors that are coming as a result of that. I think one of the best things about this job is hearing about the stories of our visitors and what they experience while they're in the States. Sherry shared a few of them. I'll share a few in these remarks. And really the inspiring things that they do once they get home, right? Six months ago, 
Truth be told, I didn't know very much about the International Visitor Leadership Program. I knew that the State Department did exchange programs, but I had no idea in terms of the depth of this program. So it's quite amazing to have this responsibility to run the program. And I'm, I'm collecting stories. I am a collector of stories. And uh, my friends and family and all of the neighbors, people around me, are now getting to understand the program as well and, and the amazing impact and the far reach you have as a result of what we do here. So I just returned from a closing that was done in Miami, where I also got stuck because of snow, um, where I heard firsthand about, uh, from the visitors as they were reviewing the program. So this was kind of the first program that I saw at the beginning and at the end. And one of the visitors from Cambodia, a woman who was doing work in the housing area, she said during the uh, evaluation process, really succinctly, she was real quiet until she started speaking. <laughs> and she says, freedom is not free. She talked about how she saw Americans taking steps to promote human rights and democracy. She said she really, her initial impressions about Americans were that they were really quite boastful, you know? And it wasn't until that she, she was engaged with our network and got to meet folks from our, um, and, and our meetings, our interlocutors, that this impression changed a bit. She observed that, you know, it would, all Americans are in fact not, not supportive of war, that they have compassion, that they're willing to share their talent, their time, their resources to help vulnerable and marginalized groups. And she made the comment that, you know, Americans really try to contribute to making the U.S. a better place. I think one of the things that she was really struck by was how Americans follow the rule of law, but have a backstop of being able to speak their mind if it, if it comes to pass. I think that really kind of struck her. Um, in short, you know, she went home with a better understanding of who we are, and that was a result of the work that you do. She went home with friendships that I think are going to last her a lifetime, and these are the kind of experiences that inspire me, and I think inspire you all to do the work that you do. In June, we had our very first uh, joint program, joint IV program with participants um, from the Dominican Republic and from Haiti on youth leadership and conflict resolution. So if any of you know the island of Hispaniola, you know that it's shared by two very different and sometimes segregated populations. So the embassy staff shared with us and reported to us that during their first meeting, that tension and distrust and mistrust really filled the room. It was quite palpable. But three weeks later, after the program, you know, hugs and kisses were in fact the norm. So one of the Dominican participants said that through the program, he, he captured it quite nicely. He said, we, we became friends for life. Now when they, when they, when they heard of the earthquake that hit um, that hurt, hit Haiti, our Dominicans quickly reached out to help uh, their Haitian friends and offer support. And we've all been very devastated by uh, the events that hit, have hit Haiti. Our office has responded in, to the tragedy in small ways. We've, uh, we've been able to connect to alumni and we've also created a project on sustainable urban development and reconstruction that if everything uh, right, happens correctly, we'll be, we'll be able to bring 10 participants to the states in July. And we've also uh, scheduled a second version of the Haiti Dominican Republic Youth Leadership Program. 